Welcome to Roby Tech. I am your host, Justin Roby. Uh, this is a show dedicated to PC building, tech news, tech deals, and so much more. Okay, let's talk about parts. You guys are like, shut up, Roby. First and foremost, starting at the core 5950X, this is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. This I am excited about. Yeah. This is the Azeroc Razor Edition B550 Tai Chi. We are using uh, the WD Black uh, SN850, the XPG Spectrix D60G. This is 3600 at CL14. This is the EKAIO 240D RGB. Um, don't buy this from Newegg. Uh, buy this from Amazon if you are gonna buy it because it's literally $100 less on Amazon. But I wanted to do something that was Chroma compatible. And so I'm gonna be using my good old friends, Deep Cool, their MF120 GTs, which actually do support Chroma. Another part, another part, Roby is very excited oh, wait, about. Oh there's more. There's more, Roby. There's more, and that's right. I am so excited to get to use this oh, again. Big boy. And this is the Azeroc uh, RX 6800 XT Tai Chi, also going with the Tai Chi that we have here from Razer. So let's grab our motherboard. So top corner up here, uh, we've got, uh, these are fan headers. This is where you're gonna plug in most of your fans. These right here are the RGB headers. You've got a 12 volt non-addressable and a five volt addressable RGB. Not a lot of products use the 12 volt, but most of the time when you're hooking up RGB, this is where most people hook that stuff up. This is your RAM right here. Um, you actually see that it's dual channel. This right here is USB 3. We've got USB-C right here. Uh, then down here, we've got another USB 3, this one in a 90 degree angle. So you've actually got two options to support USB 3 in two places, something else a little bit more pricey there. Uh, we've got support for eight SATA. This is where you're gonna plug in hard drives, etc. Now down here, this is another thing that's new on $299 boards. And usually you'll see stuff like this. This has a separate power and reset button. So if you get something wrong here, uh, then you can, and like you haven't connected your front panels right, you can actually use these buttons to do things like troubleshoot, etc., reset stuff. And then it's also got a clear CMOS button, which is another benefit. The other thing here is this right here is a little notification dial that does things like tells you like if what an error is. You can also change it in the BIOS to do things like tell you CPU temperature, etc., like that. Again, something you're going to get on a more premium board that you wouldn't see on, an, on, a, on a less expensive board. We've now got two USB 2. Uh, then we've got uh, more RGB, which is again something else you've got support for four. Um, RGB on this board, something you wouldn't get on a less expensive board. Uh, and then finally over here, you've got HD audio. And then you've got one by 16 and then two by eight uh, PCI. Remember this is B550, so only the top one is actually PCIe Gen 4. The rest of this stuff down here is Gen 3. And then you've got support for, it looks like three M.2 drives, which is pretty crazy. So let's go ahead and get our, uh, our CPU in. There we go. There you go. Gonna pop it in there. It's gonna be good. 5950X is in there. Let's grab our RAM kit now and our and our our other stuff. What we're gonna do is you see there's a little slot in the PCB right here. Wow, you can see like the whole PCB here. We're gonna basically gonna take this little slot and let, and line it up just like that, and then fancy. There we go. Okay, cool. So we've got that out now. Looks like we don't actually have to worry about using the standoff. Okay, so here we go. We got a little slot in the PCB. We're just gonna put that in just like that. And then there we go. Okay, so M.2 is installed now. We've got our CPU installed. we got our RAM installed. Okay, here we go. Hefty boy. Okay, so that comes off. And they actually pop off from the side. Okay, cool. That's kind of a funky design. This has covers to hide all of your cable management mistakes. Okay, there we go. Now, the last thing I want to do is we're just going to quickly undo this real quick. And we're just going to move this forward. Okay, now you can get the brick out. You do have the covers that go over everything so you can hide all your stuff. This is your chroma module. This thing uses super thin ribbon cables. So when you are building, make sure that you will take extra care here in terms of not breaking this because then you'll basically break your underglow support and stuff like that. There's like a filled brick in here. The only way to do that is there's a little screw on this drive tray that allows you to actually move the drive tray. You have to push it all the way in to be able to open this up and pull it out. So those are the things I kind of did to the strip. I also took the front panel off. The one thing that's really nice about this, we're gonna throw our MF120s in this real quick. This allows me to remove the tray to put our fans in. Okay, fans are done. 
go ahead and put in our motherboard. Okay, here we go. Pop in our crazy Razer Chroma. There we go, it's in. Look at that. Looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna put our AIO together. Ooh. Okay, so now we're gonna open this up. They actually come with their own radiator screws because they are longer. So do not use the screws that come with your AIO. Use the ones that come with the MF120s. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and undo all of our cables here that we have and get these run. And then uh, also just get our fans hooked up. Okay, let's turn this over, get our GPU installed. Everybody say GPU time. That's annoying. You have these like screw holes that block you from being able to get to the, like screw it in correctly. So you have to like come from the side, which is like, what is that? Okay, here we go. Getting our GPU in. This is a big card, by the way. We may have to worry about, I might have to use that fancy um, sag bracket. Whoa, I don't even know where that went. I'll be right back guys. I need to get a thinner screwdriver. One second. Uh, you have to have a, the standard screwdriver here to use this the right way. If you don't have a standard screwdriver, you're kind of SOL. Which is like, what is that? Okay, got it in. It's just annoying. That was annoying. Everything there, now we're just gonna pop it over and put in our PSU. There's our motherboard power. Next is CPU, PCI, we have two of them. There's one. One thing I do like about this case is just the amount of room to drop the PSU in. Okay, there we go, build is done. There we go. Now, put the build back together. Ugh. Here we go. Turning on and turning on. Boom. Wow. There it is. What's up guys? Well, we wanted to take a little brief bit now that we're actually doing these case reviews and we've done a bunch of new cases that we talk about what our experience was and kind of our closing thoughts on the build after we got finished. You've watched the whole build so you can see live about the things that kind of got me frustrated, but I wanna just kind of highlight these things and give you a final recommendation. Uh, in short, it's $199. It is $100 more expensive than the actual exact same case, which is the Landcool 2, which is what this case is minus the front kind of spacing or front, sorry, front casing, which comes with the Land Cool too. I mean, for an extra hundred dollars, just having a little bit of a light bar and the addition of, of Razor Chroma, 
doesn't seem like a, a, a lot to me. I'm not the biggest fan of Razer Chroma. There's not the control for their RGB compared to things like IQ and everything else is actually a little bit, I don't know, it just feels like behind the times. And the other thing too is it's very, very bloated software for what you get. Now, is it an attractive case? Absolutely, it's a beautiful case. But the other thing, it doesn't have a ton of airflow. I mean, we have a ton of fans in this, but outside of this, it's only getting air from the side and nowhere else. Having to screw in the GPU requires a very specific, you have to have an old school screwdriver. So if you have like an iFixit, or if you have like something like I did with the WoW stick, like you're gonna find yourself frustrated because you can't get the GPU in and out of the case. Would I recommend the Razer Tomahawk ATX case in the end. There are better cases, like all in all, you're looking at Fantex, the uh, P500A, the P600S at that point in time. You can look at cases like the 5000D that just came out from Corsair at $149. So really at this point in time, you're paying for the premium Razer name and the uh, addition of the green highlights. Those are my closing thoughts. Would love to know down in the comments below what you thought of those. And if things like this are helpful when we get to the end of these kind of videos.